Hello dear students, this is grade 11 mathematics lesson on unit 5, stuff 16 probability. Today, we will focus on probability. After revising this lesson, you are expected to determine the probability of an event. So, let's see this one. If an event A can happen in m ways out of n equally likely possibilities so the probability of the occurrence of an event e is given by probability of event is equals to number of event divided by number of sample space or simply it is probability of event uh, is equal to its number of event it's m divided by number of sample space by the way, uh, sample space is it is, uh, it is the total possible outcomes under the experiment. For example, if you uh, toss or roll a die, the total uh, possible outcomes or sample space will be it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is the total uh, possible outcomes under experiment. We call it sample space. And the subset of this sample space, we call it event. For example, uh, number getting odd, odd number odd, getting odd, will be subset of the sample space. So uh, we have one event. So event getting odd number will have one, three, five. This is it. If we are asked, what is the probability of getting odd number when you roll a die? Probability of the event is equal to this number of events divided by number of sample space. Here, the event is getting number odd. So, we have three possible events here. Therefore, number of events is this, 3 divided by sample space is this, 6. 3 over 6 will be the probability of getting odd number when you roll a die. So, probability of an event is given by number of event over number of sample space. So, let's see example. A box contains four red and five black poles. If one ball is drawn at random, what is the probability of getting red ball? So, simply here, probability of the event is given by number of event divided by number of sample space. The event here is getting red ball. How many red balls do you have? Four. We can count easily here. It's given. It's four. Divided by the total number of balls or sample space is four plus five is nine. So the probability will be this four over nine. But sometimes we may face uh, some complex thing to count. In that case, we need to have some counting technique. So let's see uh, counting techniques or principle of counting to evaluate probability we count so we need uh, to have a counting principle for complex cases so the first counting principle is this multiplication principle if an event e1 occurs in m different ways and another event e2 occur in in different ways, then both events together occur simultaneously in m times in different ways. By the way, you can extend this for more than two events. For example, if we have three events E1 that occurs in m different ways and another event 2 occurs in any different ways and another event 3 occurs in are different ways then these three events simultaneously occurs in m times n times r different ways now let's see example for this example suppose that you have three quotes eight shirts and six different trousers. 
In how many different ways can you dress? It says here. So here we have event one. We have three coats. Event one, three different ways of wearing style for coat, and eight different wearing style for shirt, and six different wearing style for trouser. So we do this simultaneously. So even one, three ways. First, even two, eight ways, and even three, six different ways. These events together occurs in simply three times eight times six different ways. So E1, E2, and E3 simultaneously occurs in three times eight times six, which is equal to 144 different wearing styles. Okay, now let's see the second principle of counting. Addition principle. If an event E1 occurs in M different ways, and another event E2 can occur in N different ways, then either of the events occur in N plus M. In this case, you add N plus M different ways. But this is true when the events are mutually exclusive. Mutually exclusive events are events that do not have intersection or common. So for mutually exclusive events, if event 1 occurs in m different ways and event 2 occurs in n different ways, so either of event 1 or event 2 occurs in m plus n different ways. Now example, a question paper has two parts. A question paper has two parts where one part contains six questions and the other part contains four questions. If a student has to choose only one question from either part, in how many different ways can the student do it? Okay, here we have two events, E1, four from Part one, he select one question. So in how many different ways can he select? In six different ways. Either he select the first question, second or third or fifth, fourth and sixth. Therefore, he has six different ways of selection uh, for the first part. So event one has six different ways. And he can also choose second part. So from second part, since there's four questions, he has four different ways of selecting the question. So he cannot do the questions from part one and part two. He will select either from part one or part two, from event one or event two. Event one here occurs, event one occurs in six different ways and event two occurs in four different ways, so the number of different ways either doing from event 1 or event 2 is simply the sum of these numbers 6 and 4. Therefore, event 1, 6 different ways, event 2, 4 different ways. So E1 or E2, event 1 or event 2 occurs in 6 plus 4 or in 10 different ways. Now, the next one is this permutation. Permutation is this the number of arrangement of objects attention given to order of arrangement. Which means if you are asked to arrange letter two letters A and B, arranging A B and arranging B A R different, it considers the order. It gives attention for the order. So A, B, and B are different arrangements. Therefore, the number of arrangements of N objects taken R at a time, where R is between 0 and N, is the permutation of N objects taking R at a time. And it is denoted by this one. It's a permutation of N objects taking R at a time, 
or it can be written in this form. And this is defined as, it's a permutation of n objectives taking r at time is given as it is n factorial divided by n minus r factorial. So this means it is arrange, this formula tells us, arrange n objectives by taking r at a time. It's given by n factorial over n minus r factorial. Let's see examples here. In how many different ways can we arrange the letters A, B, and C taking two letters at a time? By the way, since these numbers are three, we can arrange easily uh, by taking two letters at a time uh, without applying the formula. Look, you can arrange the letter A with the letter A with B, the letter A with C, and the letter B with C. Since permutation considers order, so B is also another arrangement, and C is also another arrangement, and CB is another arrangement. We will have six different arrangements of these uh, three letters by taking two at a time. So applying the formula, applying the formula, uh, this means arrange, arrange how many letters? Three letters taking two at a time, taking two letters at a time. So this is, it is given by, it is three factorial, divided by 3 minus 2 factorial. So this will be equal to 3 factorial means it is 3 times 2 times 1 divided by 3 minus 2 factorial it is 1 factorial it is 1 so it gives you it is 6. So we have 6 arrangements here it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So to arrange an object is taking r at a time, you can use this formula. This, you can use this formula. Okay, now let's proceed. Let's see combinations. The number of ways r objects can be chosen from a set of n objects without considering here, without considering the order of selection is called the number of combinations of n objects taking r of them at a time. And it is denoted by, it's a combination of n objects taking r at a time, or you can use this form, n combination r. And this is defined by this formula. It's a combination of n objects taking r at a time is given by this n factorial divided by n minus r factorial times r factorial. By the way, combination, it doesn't consider the order. This means that, for example, if we have two letters, selecting letter AB is the same as selecting BA. It's not arrangement, selection. Select two letters. Selecting A and B means the same as selecting B and A. So, uh, combination doesn't consider the order, it doesn't consider the order. So let's see this one. In how many different ways can you select two letters from the letter A, B, and C? Since this uh, are three in number, so uh, it is easy. You can list the number of different ways of selection. So let's see the number of different ways of selection without using the formula. We are selecting two letters. So you can select either letter A and B. You can select two letters A and C. Or you can select the letter B and C. There is no other way of selection. Selecting AB, therefore, there is no other 
way of selection. So we have three different ways of selecting uh, two letters from these three letters. Okay, so applying the formula, applying the formula, combination means selection. So it is combination of you select two letters out of three. It is a combination of three to two. So this is given by three factorial divided by the difference of the two, three minus two factorial times two factorial using the formula n factorial, n minus r, and r factorial. So here, 3 factorial, 3 minus 2 factorial times 2 factorial. Therefore, this is equal to this, 3 times 2 factorial divided by, this is 1 factorial, it's 1 times 2 factorial. You can cancel 2 factorial by 2 factorial. You will have 3. Therefore, you will have 3 different ways of selection. For complex number, you can apply the formula. You can apply the formula to count the number of different ways of selection. So let's proceed. Now let's see this one. A committee of seven students has to be formed from nine boys and four girls. In how many ways can this be done when a committee contains at least three girls? The question says, at least three girls must be a member of the committee. This means, at least three means three and above. So, three, at least three, this means it is three and above. Therefore, we can select three girls in how many different ways we have how many girls? Let me write here. Four girls. And four girls and nine boys. So we need to select how much? We need to select seven students. Uh, so what you do is you select three students from from the girls at the same time you select from nine boys you select four students this is the first possible way of selecting students or since it is three girls or above so three or four girls since we have four girls four of them will be also a member therefore we may select four girls out of four at same time at same time we need to select three boys since the committee contains seven members so you select four girls at the same time. Out of the nine boys, out of the nine boys, you will select three boys. Now here, let's see the different ways of selection. The different ways of selection of three girls out of four means it is four combination three. And the different ways of selection of four boys out of nine means this nine combination four and this be these two events are done at the same time therefore you apply multiplication rule you multiply this therefore this becomes this the combination of four three times it is the combination of the combination of uh, four boys selected out of nine or means it is this event or this one plus this will be this, the combination of four girls are selected out of four different ways of selection. At the same time, times you select, it's a combination of nine to three. Three boys are selected out of nine. The different ways of selection is this one. 
and these two events are uh, occurs at the same time for girls and three boys. So you multiply these two to find, uh, you apply multiplication rule to find the total possible ways. Therefore, you will have this one. You select three girls and four boys or four girls and three boys since the committee contains seven members. So this quality is different way of selecting three girls. It's a combination of four to three. And means times, it's selecting four boys means this, a combination of nine, four. Or is plus, it's a combination of four girls selected, four combination four, times the combination of three boys will be selected out of nine. So you multiply this. When you validate this result, you will have this, this one is four, combination of nine to four is this, 106, and the combination of four to four is one. And the combination of 9 to 3 is this, 84. 84 times 1 is this, 84. When you add this, 504 plus 84, and adding this, you will have 588 different ways. Okay, now let's see basic points in probability. Let S is a sample space. And A is an event. Then the probability of sample space is equal to this one. And the probability of impossible event is this is zero. And the probability of an event is always between zero and one inclusive. That means the probability of an event is this between 0 and 1, including 1 and 0, which is 0, less than or equal to probability of an event. This is less than or equal to 1. Another point here, if E complement is a complement of an event E, then probability of E complement is given as it is 1 minus probability of the event. It's a basic formula. Now, another point, if E1 and E2 are two events, then probability of E1 union E2 or probability of E1 or E2, that means, is given by probability of event 1 plus probability of event 2 minus probability of E1 intersection E2 or probability of E1 and E2. Now, if two events E1 and E2 are independent events, then the probability of E1 and E2 is given as the product of probability of E1 and probability of E2. Now let's see example. There are four black, two red, four white balls in a box. If three balls are selected at random, then what is the probability that all balls selected are black? All balls selected are black and at least one ball is white. Probability of black, here we are selecting how many balls? Three balls. So in how many different ways can we select three black balls? Since we have four black balls, so the number of different ways of selecting uh, three black balls out of four black balls is this combination of four to three. This is the event. The sample space is the number of selecting three balls out of the total balls. So how many balls do we have here? Four plus two, six, six plus four, ten. Out of these ten black balls, we are selecting three. In how many different ways? The sample space, this combination of ten to three. So this equals to combination of 4 to 3 is this 4, the number of events is 4, divided by the number of sample spaces combination of 10 to 3, it gives you 120. When you simplify this, you will have 1 over 30. Now next, okay, next probability of at least one white. Probability of at least one white means is equal to 1 minus probability of no white. Applying this one, probability of E complement is equal to 1 minus probability of E. So, the complement of no white 
the complement of at least one white is this no white. Therefore, probability of at least one white is equal to one minus probability of no white. Therefore, one minus number of event, no white ball, the different way of selecting no white ball. So no white, how many no white balls do we have? Two red and four black. We have six no white balls. So in how many different ways you can select six combination? Three, we are selecting three balls. Therefore, it's a combination of six to three uh, over the total sample space. How many balls do we have here? The total, 10 balls. We are selecting three. In how many different ways? In 10 combination three. Therefore, it's a combination of 10 to three. So this equal to this one minus the combination of six uh, to three is 20 and the combination of 10 to 3 is this, 120. When you simplify this, you will have 5 over 6 is 1. Therefore, uh, the probability of selecting at least one uh, white ball is this 5 over 6. OK, now let's see second example. A bag contains three black and two white balls. If we draw two balls, one after the other, with replacement, with replacement, then find the probability that the first ball is black and the second ball is white. So here, event one, drawing black ball on a first row. Event two, assume it is drawing white ball on second row. So here we are asked what? What is the probability that what is the probability that the first ball is black, E1, and second ball is white, E2? We are asked to find this one. The probability of the first ball is black and the second ball is white. Probability of E1 and E2 is asked. So, these two, even this E1 and E2 are independent events. That means, selecting, we have three black and two white balls. Selecting a black ball on the first row doesn't affect the selection of white ball on the second row since the ball is replaced. So they are independent event. For independent event, probability of E1 and E2 is given by this formula. It is probability of E1 times probability of E2. So this is it. Next, probability of E1. What is the probability of selecting a black ball on a first row? We have three black. Out of how much ball? Total ball, sample space, five. Three black and two white, so three over five is the probability of selecting a black ball on a first row. And what is the probability of selecting White ball on second row. We have how many whites? Two whites. How many total number of balls? Since the ball, the selected ball is replaced, we have three black and two white. So selecting two white on second row will be two over the total number five. Therefore, the product of these two gives you this six over twenty-five. Therefore, the probability of selecting a black ball on the first row and white ball on second row is equal to this 6 over 25. Now let's see about conditional probability. If E1 and E2 are two events on the first row or E1 has occurred is noted by this symbol. Probability of event 2 given that event 1 has occurred. And we call this, this a conditional probability. The conditional probability of E2 given that E1 has already occurred. So here, if E1 and E2 are independent events, the probability of event 1 given that event 2 has occurred is equal to, it doesn't affect this one. This event 2, the occurrence of event 2, doesn't affect the occurrence of event 1 since they are independent. Therefore, Probability of event 1 given that event 2 will be equal to probability of event 1 if they are independent. Again here, probability of event 2 given that 
event 1 has occurred will be equal to probability of event 2 since they are independent. The occurrence of event 1 will not affect the probability of event 2. Therefore, probability of event 2 given that event 1 will be probability of event 2. And here, if E1 and E2 are dependent events, then the probability of event 1 and event 2 will be given by this formula. Probability of event 1 times probability of event 2 given that event 1. Or probability of event 1 and event 2 is equal to probability of event 2 times probability of event 1 given that event 2 has occurred. Okay. Now let's see example. A box contains three red, two black balls. One ball is just chosen or drawn at random and is not replaced in this case, is not replaced. And a second ball is drawn. Then find the probability of the second ball is black. The probability of the second ball is black given that red ball is occurred in the first row. Red ball is occurred on the first row. It's not replaced. So we are asked the probability A here, it is the probability of a second ball is black. The second ball is black given that red ball is occurred on the first row. Okay, so how many balls do we have here? Three red and two black. The question on the first row, one red ball is selected. Here it says probability of black ball gives that red ball has occurred. Therefore, here, how many red balls we have in the box? Only two red and two black on the second row. Therefore, the probability of black ball given that on the first row will be how many black balls do we have? Two divided by the total number of balls, two red and two black, since one ball is drawn, uh, red ball is drawn, therefore it is four. Therefore, two over four, it will be half. So the probability of black ball, given that red ball has occurred on the first row, will be it is one over two. Next, find the probability that the first ball is red and the second ball is black. So here, the probability of red and black is asked. So in this case, probability of red and black, since uh, uh, these events are dependent, we apply conditional probability. So probability of red and black is equal to this. Probability of red times probability of black, but probability of black given that red ball has occurred on the first draw. So this will be equal to the probability of red is, it is, how many red balls? We have three. How many black? Two. So, the probability of red ball will be this three out of five. Three over five times on the second, since not replaced on second, the probability of black, given that red has occurred on the first row, will be this probability of on the second row we have two red and two black therefore here the probability of black red bull has occurred on, verse, on the first row will be this two over the total number will be four this two over four therefore when you multiply this you have three over ten cancel half half times three over five this three over ten now, to summarize, probability of sample species it is 1, and probability of an impossible event is 0, and probability of an event is always between 0 and 1 inclusive, which means 0 is less than or equal to probability of an event, which is less than or equal to 1. And if uh, E is the complement of an event E, then probability of E complement will be given as 1 minus probability of E. And the other point, if E1 and E2 are two events, then 
the probability of E1 union E2 will be given by probability of E1 plus probability of E2 minus probability of E1 intersection E2. Again, if E1 and E2 are two independent events, then the probability of E1 and E2 will be given by probability of E1 times probability of E2. For dependent events, probability of E1 and E2 will be given by probability of E1 times probability of E2 given that E1 has occurred. So, this all about the lesson. Please try exercise 5.15 on page 28. Goodbye.